Yeah, yeah. Yes. Put this down. Huh? All right, Coach, you can go ahead and uh, give an opening statement, and we'll open up for questions for everyone here. Well, this, this is a, a hell of a college basketball game. It wasn't the prettiest game by any means. It was it was a little bit ugly at times, and you had two teams out there just battling it and, and getting after it. And uh, really, they're the best field goal percentage defensive team in our league. We're like six, but our defense has gotten a lot better over the last three, four weeks. I've talked about it, um, and we, we did a great job. We forced them into 19 turnovers. That's something that Washington State doesn't do uh, very often is turn the ball over. So our pressure, I think, got to them. That was part of our game plan. But uh, so proud of these guys, just the fight and the, and the grit that they played with down the stretch. And you know, we made plays. And we had to make plays. And, and we weren't at our best. I don't think Washington State was at their best, but you know what? I think we each had a lot to do with that. We had a lot to do with them not playing as well offensively as maybe they normally do. And I think they maybe had something to do with why we didn't play as well offensively. They got good players. They're well coached. They've had a hell of a year. But uh, uh, big time win by some big time guys and big time players. Okay, we'll go ahead and open up to questions. We'll start here in the far left, the second row. Adam. Hi, Coach. Adam Wilson Tiger, 24 7 Sports, fouling up three under Ooh. 10 seconds. <laughs> Is that a. It's not my, that's not my style. Those of you know, that's not what, what we do. But I just, I was really afraid. Wells is such a good shooter, and I just didn't want one to go in. I, I felt like, you know, the, the time was right. We have practiced it a little bit. Um, so, and I have confidence in us making free throws and getting rebounds. And Eddie got a big rebound off their missed free throw. Because, you know, they got to they make their free throws too. And, and we're, we're a great free throw shooting team. So, you know, I went with that. I normally play that out. And uh, but then it worked out tonight. So uh, yeah, it's not my style, but that's what we did. Now we'll go in the front row, the far right. Oliver Hayes, Golden Sports. KJ, you took a big hit at the at the end of the game. Uh, how are you feeling? And you know, what's what's the mindset? Uh, win one more, one more game. <laughs> that's that's simple as that. Ain't got time to pout. Ain't got time to um, sit and worry about a small, slight, a little injury, a little neck. Uh, just one more game. It's the second straight game where the offense has kind of struggled to get going. What do you think is the keys that they're missing out and what's going to take them off? I think we got to get more movement. You know, our first half last night, we talked about it. I thought our second half offense last night was really good, to be honest with you. Um, so it's really uh, been three halves. I mean, but but again, I think Washington State had a lot to do with that. I thought we were we, we were better in the second half offensively. We didn't make as many shots as we normally make. We had some good looks, but again, they're a good defensive team. So uh, as long as we're getting good movement, I think when we have trouble offensively is when we over dribble the ball and we stand. And if, if we can get the ball moving, get our bodies moving and get paint touches, whether it's down to Eddie, down low or penetration and kicks, because uh, Washington State's not a team you're gonna come down and just make run one action and score on. They're just too good. And you have to prepare to beat good defenses. We ran into a good defense tonight. Um, we scored 58 points. And there's a lot of times we've scored 58 points and lost because our defense wasn't good enough. What I'm so proud of this team is we scored 58 and one because they were good enough on the other end. Third row in the middle. Pat Rudy, Bowler, Yellow Camera. For the players, uh, this team at its best for most of the season has meant 80 to 90 points, 20 assists, lots of offense. But what's it say about you guys that you can come on this stage and win this kind of game here? Yeah, I just, uh, like Coach said, you know, it was, we knew it was going to be a tough battle. I mean, uh, two very competitive teams with a bunch of talent on both sides, great coaching staff. So it was just going to be a dogfight, and it was going to be nothing easy. And I think for both teams, experience, you know, a lot of tough possessions. You know, shots weren't falling that usually fall. Um, but we just both, or we as a team, understood that we had to, guard defensively and uh, no matter if our offense was clicking as much as it has been you know the whole season we just had to guard and it came down to that uh, late in the possessions late in the game and we did that that's why we were able to come out on top. Mark Anderson AP uh, you went pretty much the entire second half until about three minutes ago they caught you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what was about that moment that you guys didn't panic and you immediately took the lead right back? Uh, I say I went to the huddle I told them we got to win this game. That's all that matter. And that's what we did. It wasn't about who was scoring the ball. It was rebounding, defense, and 
winning the game, and that's all that matters really at the end of the day. Carson Fields of Colorado Springs is that coach. And Colorado joined the league, won the Pac-12 championship. As this conference goes away, how special is it to be in the last Pac-12 championship? Well, I think it's appropriate, you know. And these guys, uh, they just tied a school record um, in wins, 24. Um, we've got an opportunity to break that tomorrow, and uh, it's not going to be easy. Oregon's a hell of a program. They've, they've uh, had a lot of success in this tournament, and, uh, but we have too. And, and so uh, I think it's appropriate that we're in the championship uh, uh, game the last uh, year of the Pac-12, and we won it the first year of the Pac-12. But, you know, it's, uh, we're going to we're gonna have to play a hell of a game tomorrow to win. And, uh, it's not going to be easy, but we'll be ready. Uh, for Tad, Luke only had one basket, but it was really big for him. Mm -hmm. What was yeah. it like seeing that type of moment for him? Yeah, it was great. And Javon Havy made a nice play. Luke Luke is one of our best cutters on our team. And, and, and as Javon drove, and again, they're a good defensive team. He got kind of uh, stopped on his drive, and then Luke cut right behind him, and he found him, and, and Luke made a great finish. So, you know, Luke brings a lot to this team um, in scoring. You know, on certain nights, he might score more than others, and he's a good three point shooter, and he's and stretch the defense, but you know his, his his defense has gotten a lot better. His rebounding, his grit, his toughness. He's playing like a senior, and uh, it means something to Luke, which which uh, means it means something to me. I, I love guys that care, and they're all about winning, and, and that's that's what we have right now. We have a group of guys in that locker room that uh, winning is the is the most important thing. It's not individual performances, and and uh, as long as we can keep that mindset, uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun here in the next few weeks. On the left. Jake Chornis, DMVR coach. You guys swept the season series against Oregon. Now, title game coming up. Um, what's the focus going into this one to make sure you do it deep on the ground? Well, I think, you know, look, we got we to gotta understand their personnel, which these guys do a great job of. Uh, you know, Eddie and, and, and Folly Dante is a great matchup inside. Um, he'll be ready for that. And Folly Dante is a hell of a player. So he's, you know, they got Shellstad, you know, KJ's done a good job on him, but he's a, he's a good player. So we've got good matchups. And I think our guys understand, you know, who they are and how good they are. So, um, again, it's not going to be easy. We're going to have to have a great defensive effort. We're going to have to really move the ball. And uh, their, their zone tonight, they really slowed the pace down against Arizona tonight. Uh, they usually are a team that wants to run, get out and run with you, with, with us and when we played them. And, and so we'll see how tomorrow night's game goes. But um, we're just going to have to find a way. And it's not going to be easy because they got good players. They're well coached. And. Again, they've had a lot of success in this tournament, but it's about being mentally and physically ready. We got to get rest, we got to get hydration, we got to, you know, dig deep, and and uh, we're 40 minutes away. Second row here in the middle. Fred Hutchison, Rivals.com. Uh, Ted, I have two questions. One, uh, playing Dana Altman in the title game as two of the most tenured head coaches in this conference. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? And then clicking the march. Everybody talks about getting, you know, your right foot as you head into March. Where do you think? is on that journey? Well, the, the second part of that question I'll take first. Obviously, we've won, I don't know, what's it, eight in a row now? Eight in a row? So I think we're clicking pretty good. <laughs> I don't know if any other team in the country has won eight in a row, but uh, that doesn't mean anything. That, that means absolutely nothing going into tomorrow. So um, it's, it's about tomorrow's game. And in terms of Coach Altman, you know, I've got a lot of respect for him. He was a head coach at Creighton when I was an assistant at Wichita State, so I had – chance to compete against him for six years when he was there and now uh, our 13th year in the league. Um, he's a hell of a coach. He's had a hell of a uh, career, you know, over 750 wins. So uh, got a lot of respect for him, but, but uh, uh, it's about, it's about the players this time of year. It's not about the coaches in my, in my opinion. I think he would probably agree with that. A few more starting here in the back. Matt Payne, 24 seven sports Ted. the first two times around against Oregon. What were the, Differences in those games. Uh, you know, golly, I you're here. You hit me after this one. I, I, I could probably answer that better in the morning, uh, or maybe midday tomorrow. I get a chance to, to to look. But again, I think handling their sometimes they press, sometimes they run the matchup zone, sometimes they run man to man. So handling their changing defenses, we've done a good job of that all year. Not just against Oregon, but against a lot of teams that have done it. And uh, and then I think you know, guarding them because uh, Oregon is a team traditionally that is going to try to outscore you. And so if you can slow them down defensively, 
um, and get out in transition, hopefully, and, and get some easy baskets, uh, you, you have a better chance of winning. And we've done that, you know, for, but the, but the game in Eugene was, it was a dogfight, man. It was a four point game that was, that could have gone either way. And we made plays down the stretch. And uh, so uh, again, it's not going to be easy. They're, they're playing for their, their tournament life. And I feel like we are too. And we're, but we're more importantly, we're playing for a Pac-12 championship. Last one here in the middle of the KJ, going back to last week, uh, defensively for you, you made it a tough night for Jordan Hope at Oregon mm -hmm. State. We talked about yesterday against Smith and again tonight against Miles Rice. I mean, how much pride and, and I guess focus are you bringing to the court right now on that end of the floor? Yeah, um, I'm just really proud of myself on defense. You know, coach talks about it. You know, it doesn't just take one person. It takes a whole team. And, you know, not just me, but I feel like a lot of guys, you know, are going out there guarding tough positions. I mean, Javon Hadley's doing a great job, you know, uh, guarding the other guys forward uh, position and, uh, you know, this whole team. But for me personally, um, I think I just have a chip on my shoulder, you know, not being first team on defense and just going out there and proving, proving everybody wrong and just trying to get uh, – be a leader on the defensive end for this team. KJ Simpson's the best defensive point guard in this league, and it's not even close. It's not even close. He doesn't get enough credit. And uh, we, his teammates know, his coaches know, the CU fans know. Um, but I got, I got so much respect for, for, for he plays both sides of the ball, and there's so few college basketball players that do that. We got, we got a, a bunch of them. KJ is not the only one, but man, he's uh, he's uh, what's what's the word you guys use? He's a dog. <laughs> he's a dog. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you.